Hello my friends. I'm going to share with you the installation of two more fish tanks into my aquaponic system. The first two tanks I struggled with for days trying to get the uniseals into the tanks with the two inch pipe through the uniseal. Not going to do that again. I came up with a quick solution that's going to take days of work into just a few minutes. Here you see I I'm using a piece of all thread rod. It, I found this in my barn. It's a piece of a turnbuckle. Uh, it's half inch diameter. Um, it still has the turnbuckle uh, yoke attached to it, which is going to come in handy. The uh, uniseal and the pipe uh, are dry. Uh, it has extreme high friction, so I'm using the dish soap and some water as a lubricant to push this in. I'm applying the soap to both the pipe and the inside of the uniseal. I'm going to install the all thread with the yoke into the two inch pipe. Through the yoke, I'm going to install a piece of scrap metal. It's going to be used as the stop on the inside. In addition to the uh, stop, I'm going to use a, a piece of scrap 4 inch PVC pipe uh, to be used as a spacer. I took a scrap block of wood and drilled a half inch hole into it. This is going to be on the outside end of the all thread rod. If you don't have what I'm using, the yoke of the all thread or the turnbuckle, you can cut two blocks of wood with holes in it and use one on each side. I inserted a washer and then the half inch nut. The washer will cut down the friction of the nut rubbing against the wood. The two inch pipe is then inserted, the spacer goes over top on the inside, and then it's going to be locked together with the piece of scrap steel. This is where a third hand would really come in handy because I can't even see inside the tank. After it's assembled, I snug the nut up by hand, and then I'm going to use a wrench, or in this case, my channel locks, and I'm going to start tightening the whole unit. As it's tightening, it's drawing the two inch pipe into the uniseal. I found what helps the two inch pipe going into the uniseal is to wiggle the two inch pipe and it's helping it to slip into the uniseal. You only have to get that two inch pipe about one inch inserted into the uniseal. That should bring it all the way to the back side. After it's in, the two inch pipe should be lubricated again uh, with the soap and the water and that would help it slide a lot easier. Even though it's in, it still takes a lot of force to push that two inch pipe through the uniseal. I found that the uniseals work wonderful. I've never had a leak at any one of them. The two inch pipe that was inserted is the overflow to the fish tank. On top of that is going to be a 90 degree elbow that will lead to the drain. Here I'm installing the second two inch pipe into the second tank. 
and it goes a lot quicker. The existing drain had a two inch cap. I had to saw the cap off and I'm going to connect the new drain with a two inch connector. I glue all the exterior pipes together because I don't want to be surprised with a leak one morning. Any of the pipes inside the fish tank are just pressed together. I'm allowed to have leaks there or dripping. Uh, nothing's being lost because it's inside the tank. Again, as you apply any of the joints together, if at all possible, um, insert the connections together and give it a 90 degree turn, which allows it to uh, not have that uh, recoil effect and push it apart. I cut the remaining two inch pipes to size and dry fit everything together. After everything was uh, plumbed and I had a slope to the drain, I, which I used a level and set it to about a half a bubble off, um, I'm gluing all the exterior parts. Again here as I'm gluing, I'm going to insert the pipe at a 90 degree angle and give it a rotation. This can't always be done. You can see here on the uh, drain section, it just has to be inserted and then I'm making sure that I'm holding it so it's not springing back. Notice on the left tank, there's a T at the outflow. That's a temporary fix because uh, I ran out of my elbows. That's a trip to the hardware. In this case, I'm only gluing the one joint. I'm not going to glue the top overflow joint because that T is going to be replaced. The drain standpipe inside the tank is going to have a reducer, a 4 inch to a 2 inch. And uh, with this, I'm going to cut uh, feet on the ends of these reducers. Now you can see here I'm using uh, a short piece of 2 inch pipe to join the two together as a temporary fix. Without having that, you would be holding these pipes which would make it real dangerous with the chop saw because you couldn't hold it stable. Okay right now I need to set a stop block for the saw and I'm going to make three cuts and I did this with my bell siphons and so I'm doing the same thing just with a four inch pipe. Okay headphones on, safety glasses on, ready to cut.
these slots were cut one half inch from the bottom edge. Now I'm going to remove the excess material using my tubing cutter. This is what I did on my bell siphons. Now this material is a schedule 40 and it's really heavy. Uh, there's not a need to have such a heavy pipe. You can see it's a little bit more difficult to run the shears through this pipe. After removing the excess material, you can see that it left three real nice feet that will be at the bottom of the pipe. The two inch pipe that will be inside the tank will be dry fit together. The foot going on the bottom and the top will have a two inch T. Purpose of having a T is to be able to break any siphoning action which could drain your fish tanks. Here I'm installing the 2 inch stand pipe onto the 2 inch drain pipe. On the water inlet pipes, I'm drilling a quarter inch hole in the 90 degree elbow to create a venturi action. This will allow more aeration to the fish tank water. A quarter inch vinyl tube is used for the venturi. I cut a small notch in the one end, I'm inserting it, um, and the physical location of where that end of the hose is in the water flow determines how much air is being sucked into the venturi. I'm removing the end cap from the water supply. This will allow me to connect the newly constructed manifold to the water source. I'm using zip ties to secure all the pipes to the framework of the fish tanks. The water inlet pipe is terminated with a 90 degree elbow. This allows me to direct the water flow to 
create a circular action. I like to have the water uh, circulating in a counterclockwise direction, which is the right way for the northern hemisphere. The inlet valves are open and everything's working perfectly. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.